pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Can have a moment of silence, please? Roll call, Corinne. Councilor Chamberlain. Yep. Councilor Heisman. Here. Councilor Schneider. Here. Councilor Council President Stickley. Here. Councilor Simon. Here. <coughs> Councilor Tyrion. Here. Well, we have six members present in the quorum. Two. <laughs> okay, Council has had time to go over the prior meeting's minutes. Can we get a motion to accept these? I'll make the motion. <laughs> I'll second. <laughs> motion to approve the prior meeting minutes moved by Council President Stickley and seconded by Councilor Heisen. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay, great. Um, we have a couple of committee reports. Uh, tree Commission. Is anyone at Tree Commission? I was out of town on that one. Yeah, you were. I was at the beginning. Yeah. Then I left. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's piece it together. <laughs> Who had the middle you in the end? That 90 minutes later. <laughs> Talked talk about the tree code. Yeah. And then they dismissed me. <laughs> <laughs> and afterwards, that was pretty much the majority of it going over the tree code. I think we've got all the ins and outs taken care of, and we sh Tom should be given the final draft next month, or the final, final rough draft, and then we should be able to take it to safety and code after their approval in April, we are hoping. But kudos to the Tree Commission for all the work they did on it, because mm -hmm. they've done an amazing job rewriting the entire code. And on the 17th of April, they will be honored again at Tree Commit uh, City USA in Defiance for doing a good job again. So nice. that's a good honor. Yeah. Okay. Questions about trees? Okay, Park Board. Well, I come in late. They can early start, I think. <laughs> uh, when I come in, they were talking about the uh, the playground equipment. Yeah. It was coming in at just under 210000 uh, but Larry was talking about the uh, installation on the city can install. I think Mr. Arch said that at that point they're starting to get busy, but they would look into it. We're going to do as much work as we can, but as far as the installation of the actual equipment, they are not comfortable in installing it just for the safety factors of, you know, Understood. if we need to do groundwork, Cement work and stuff like that, we can do it, but the actual installation of the equipment, we think need to be, especially on this large of a piece of equipment, needs to be done by the professionals. Right. Did we outsource the, the new park, um, North Park? Mm -hmm. North, North Park and Homecoming Park were both done by, we did the groundwork, but they brought in a the company. That, that, oh, com company, that company did the installation of both the um, actual sets. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Well, other than that, they were <clears throat> explaining that the carpet had been installed at Rotary. Yes, yes. Um, the blinds were ordered but haven't been delivered yet. Very soon. So, and at that point, we're going to. So the HVAC different. was next. <laughs> <laughs> Now this, happens the the this happens at the common pleas court as well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll give you yes, it does. <laughs> what a ring, though. <laughs> yeah, that is a fine <laughs> rotary, isn't it? That's a fine area. Right. <laughs> no, I forgot where I was at. <laughs> so the blinds. carpet and blinds. Yeah, the carpet and blinds. When the TV was all, Larry was going to bring the TV when the blinds were delivered so they could all be at the same time. And then I missed the part about the uh, two council members being on the, with the softball fields. Or what, I missed that. The, we just in, informed them that the finance committee had tabled the uh, redoing of the two softball fields um, at this time. Yeah. 
just, just a couple things from the meeting minutes. Uh, the, the park board is a five person board, right? I think city council just has representatives there just to relay news back. Yes, they are. They're not voting. Yeah. So the vote of six nothing to accept the park board meeting minutes. I think it, I just want to remind the park board it's a five person board, so it should only be five voting members. Would that be you, Jeremy? Did you vote? I did not. Well, okay. yeah, we were. Another page. Rest two, three, no. four, five. Yeah, you voted. Yes. <laughs> so you would probably need to amend the minutes on this so that it um, states that they only accept the five. Those are written by Jan, the executive yeah. assistant. Yeah. yeah, I I was kind of questioning what that meant also. And yeah, then, the yeah. council members are just um, they go to represent council and bring back the information to them. Committees. And then uh, reading the, the, the minutes, it says, uh, in reference to Bill Park, Keith states he doesn't feel the demand for organized sports is there anymore. Um, so you feel that organized sports is on a downturn? It's on a downturn nationally, from what I understand. That all organized sports are on the downturn, not yeah. just baseball, softball. But so that was on the news this morning. Yes. Unfortunately. I would love uh, for you to attend a sporting event with me uh, because uh, what I personally experience is completely contrary to that. Um, so I, I'm, I'm disappointed to hear that, uh, you know, Keith. Uh, but I've, I've often wondered, you know, why stuff doesn't happen at Biddle Park. Um, and I've, I've always wondered why. Um, and I think this is an indication as to why. Uh, because you feel that it, um, there's no demand for it. And so it does trickle down from the top. And I've often, so it, this provides clarity for me. Um, and unfortunately that that's gonna be a, a hurdle that we as council, if we're interested in further developing Biddle Park, that we're gonna constantly run into. Um, is is uh, your opinion that um, more infrastructure out there isn't warranted because there's no demand uh, when, I, when, I, when I disagree, so um, that's just right. Well, Shane, I'm just going by strict numbers on our programs. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of programs being done, but the programs utilizing the ball fields are stagnant and have not increased. The reason Biddle Park was put in there in the first place was not for tournaments. It was for our kids to be playing at the same place instead of having to be all over the city. And I want council to remember that was the reason it was put there in the first place. Not to bring in money to the city, but for our kids. Plain and simple. Well, I, if you just heard what you heard, I've not heard that. But I also look at stats within the WRA and what we have soccer, we have midget football. Um, we have softball, we have baseball, we have a lot of other things. And I know, Shane, you've mentioned how you, this is personal to you, you, you um, softball. You've made that comment a couple of times. I feel the same way again, uh, for football. I mean, that's something that I follow and I put a lot of, but you gotta go by numbers of what's needed. And I also feel if it's nationwide, it's, I don't feel that we can sit there and condemn Wasian because the numbers are down nationwide. It'd just be like that for anything. But what can we do to better it? Um, I think there's been a couple options for the softball program. Um, I've, I've talked with um, the superintendent of Wasian schools and they want to keep their softball program on their campus. They want to look at, at Bob Lamonfield. They want to do some things to encourage it. Um, I still am in favor of trying, not just for softball, but for baseball, softball, to be able to do those fields and make them workable for both softball and baseball. And I guess the, yeah, the numbers you, come, man. then we increase it. You know, the, the comment, the, the two council members who want more softball fields, there are no softball fields out there. there there's fields out there that are multi-purpose fields. Yes. Uh, but there's four fields out there that are strictly baseball fields. 
there are no softball fields. Uh, and this goes to the disparity and, and favoring baseball more than softball. I think the girls should have uh, their tracks to play on, uh, whereas the, the boys already do. Um, and the disparity is obvious to me as to the underserving the, the female athlete as compared to the male athlete at Biddle Park. Um, so I, I think we can improve things out there. Um, and I, I, I don't know why, why we're so resistant to the idea. So. I think the four founders that did this at the beginning of Biddle, I was wrong and I'll say it again, it wasn't the, the north end fields, it was the main quad I talked to the Rotary people who began this program back in 99, 2000, whatever. And those, those first quads were supposed to be softball fields. And no matter what is stated or what's discussed, I talked to the people who put it in place as to how they wanted it to be done. And it was not done the way it was supposed to. Those were supposed to be softball fields and then baseball fields. They weren't divided correctly. So yeah, baseball got that push to put all baseball. That was wrong. But with the numbers where they're at, not just in Wausau, everywhere, I still feel if we would make them to where you could have more softball tournaments, more baseball tournaments, and then if the softball increases, then we've got the field to do it. Or if the midget football increases, they have huge numbers. Or the soccer increases. We have that field to do that. But at least put something in there for the softball now to see if it would even move forward. I, I'm not saying, I think it should have been softball. My daughter played softball. She played travel. She did it all. And it's not that <coughs> we are trying to say no to softball. We're just saying, what does that park need more? Which sport? Because I can tell you, you can get tons of people in here for football. You can get tons of people in here for soccer. Those soccer players used to play in the dish at homecoming. Now they have a nice soccer field. They want more. So they can hold more tournaments. I agree that this, the softball teams got denied those fields. But that was not of our doing. I, none of us were on council at that time. Are you saying, by, by what you're saying now, are you saying that you're a proponent of transferring the two to be able to use to them change. both ways? Or are you a proponent of? From the beginning, what was discussed at that meeting, and I know there were two different options, either to do the fields or to change them. Right. I'd like um, to see us at least change them so they could hold more softball. I'm just, I tournaments. just want to know what you are, I mean, That's, you have I spoken think, to people yeah. that we have not spoken to. I didn't feel comfortable in our committee meeting making a decision to spend money in that way Wait if that minute. was not gonna solve What do you mean? I've spoken to people that I had not talked to. Well, no, I'm saying you have spoken to people like you were just mentioning about, you know, the intentions of I just of did, that I did the homework. I went back and I found out why those fields were but created. But that's why I'm asking were. you what you think because you have had well, access to information. It's the same I way had. I felt from the beginning when the finance committee met that first time. I am all for <laughs> the $40,000 that he brought forward for the finance committee to do this and see what happens and make more softball happen down there and then leave it up to the the softball to see how it goes but I agree with Keith I'm more concerned about getting our own kids in Wauseon to play down there and to get those fields filled up that way from a young age on up because well, that's what the fields are there it doesn't matter who you are you still can't use them you know what do you mean you can't use them well, if the fields don't exist, you can't use them. But they no are matter being if you're used. Or not, they are being point. used, and the softball tournaments are not filling those fields, and neither are the baseball tournaments. What's filling them right now, if you look at the numbers from WRA, is soccer and midget football. So why aren't we talking about that? It's like we're, <coughs> we're only talking because we feel like the girls are being denied. They were denied when that park was created. And we, I am for putting in the change. I think that's great. At least it gives us an idea of what would happen. Is it a brand new field? No. But I look at that kind of money 
that we're talking for brand new field on a nationwide dying of, of this kind of sport, I'd like to see some of that money go into some other things in the city, like infrastructure underneath, which we've been screaming about. So I want to see the girls get treated fairly. I've never said been against that. I would love to see us at least start moving forward, like when I talked to the superintendent. What are, you, what are your intentions? I mean, I'd like to know if you would like to play over there if we build a field. And he said, no, we're going to play on our own campus. I want to keep it there. Because, like he said, we were all over the city until Bill was, was you know, built. So I'm not against the 40,000 and see if we can get more teams to come in and play and then go from there. They, you know, they're going to say, well, we're not going to play there because they're not all softball fields. Well, you know, there's a lot of fields that are all softball. Back in the 70s and 80s when, we were, when I was playing, we played on grass with four pieces of plastic. We had there. kids and playing city in league. private churches because there wasn't enough room. We don't have those numbers in the baseball and softball <clears throat> program in here or around. It, I, it's just a change. I think, though, if you have a top-notch facility run the way it ought to be run, you will find people from all over coming to it, and the mm -hmm. local people will see it and say, man, I want to get involved. That looks like fun. I'm going to be on the softball team. I want to be on the baseball team. But when you got a mediocre setup, people just, they don't like that. Don't my, my grandson played baseball all over the place. How many years ago, and, Steve? Well, How many years yeah, ago? Yeah, but I'm, I'm, saying, I'm saying, the it's place he played, they were they were well run, organized. I agree with you on that. With great fields. So are my daughters. And the numbers are down now. Well, they may be places. down, but we're not going to bring them back with mediocre fields. I'm I sorry. Don't, I don't think we have mediocre fields. Mm -hmm. I think we just the you can't run a big build. tournament with a couple fields. Yeah. You got to. I'm talking 40 teams or so to a tournament, and you could be making money for the city. So let's the, let's build these fields so that they're versatile. So that we can have host these tournaments and see what happens. I like that idea primarily because if we expand the park that's already a headache and gross looking, then it's only going to be <laughs> more of a mess and upkeep. So if we start and pilot with what you're on board with and with the golf carts legalized, that's pretty cool. Then I think <laughs> I think what we can do is yeah I'm gonna quick drop that but I think that's a really good pilot there um, doing the forty thousand dollars not a massive investment of two hundred and ten or whatever it is because that's a lot of money for the next four years you're wanting to yeah. do that um, but seeing if we can if maybe the nationwide downturn is fake news or if it's an actual thing. And what which I'm we don't finding out also is the fact that a lot of these big places are putting in indoors um, so they can play all year round and or batting cages or whatever. It's whatever's gonna benefit that part. But then again, it's not just for softball and baseball. This is our whole recreation and we gotta look at it as a whole and not just one sport. And I do feel that if we can at least encourage girls to play and have more softball teams, see what happens. You know, not to put either of you on the spot, Keith or Mayor, uh, you guys can write your opinion if you'd like, but do either of you see the expansion of Biddle Park as an opportunity for uh, economic development? Uh, it's something that... Well, when we did that survey, and I handed that out to all of these guys because none of them were here at the time, Shane, I really feel that he stated that it might bring more people in, but you got to bring the teams in, and a lot of those teams are not going to be local. And that's what it said. You're going to be pulling from Indiana and all of that. So I don't know if that would benefit us. I really don't. I've watched soccer, and I've seen how many teams come in there because a lot of people don't have soccer fields yet. Would that benefit that part more? And bring in more soccer tournaments because those that seems to be encouraging or the one sport we don't even have is um i can't even think of it now when it hit the thing <laughs> i can't even 
even think of it. It's like soccer only hit the ball. What a minute. Lacrosse. That's it. That is a groin. That's My a huge groin. My daughter is playing lacrosse right now. Yeah, lacrosse so, is definitely growing. I mean, I do feel that if we have tournaments, no matter the tiny tournament or the softball tournament, soccer mm -hmm. tournaments, um, they're going to go and eat in our restaurants and, and maybe go to some of the Walmart stores or whatever. But being like you, going to tournaments, you're going to take your cooler, you're going to go to the tournament, you're going to stay there. We have really one hotel that's available, hopefully two soon. That's all county, you know. So it's like, do, does the $210,000 that was quoted a few years ago still, which it's going to be more because it's been a few years since we've done that survey, is it worth putting all that money into that for what if, or do we try to, to build it by making these uh, fields versatile to bring in more tournaments of baseball, more tournaments of softball, and maybe see what we can do for the other sports in that space? I mean, I think we all can agree that increased uh, traffic into our city would uh, help with the local economy, right? And if we were to have eight softball <coughs> fields or eight baseball fields and be able to compete with Rolf and CYO and Kokomo and North Ridgeville, then we might be able to host events here that would increase the, the motor vehicle traffic. And then they would visit our local vendors, support our local economy. I think it's a win-win. I think it's a good investment, especially when we hear things like IAC closing up, uh, uh, losing some of their employees. I just don't see an opportunity for economic development uh, really discussed much when I think it's important. And this is an opportunity to expand our local economy and I, I just don't think we're taking advantage of it. So. Well, we just went to a, um, an economic development um, meeting, when was that, Thursday? And they were talking about the industry that we do have industry coming in, the polymedics has uh, out there on um, industrial drive is coming. I mean, we are growing with that. Yes, IAC has been battling for years, years and years. And focusing unfortunately, on families, though, I feel like that's a that's never a a bad thing. Focusing on family, making this you know appear to be a great place for a family to come in. You know, when like they're traveling, the donations we're getting in the parks right now. So that's it does amazing. benefit our kids, even if our kid is not playing at the right. baseball at the park. Do you know what I'm saying? I do. I think that let's let's try. I mean, even if we have to put eighty thousand in and do uh, you know the, all of the fields, try to update our our little fields and get some more of our our little people in to try to grow it down from the bottom and bring it up. I don't. I think that we need to look at it as it's not going to happen in one year that it's no. all going to grow. But I do. I I agree with Shane. I I totally agree on one sec that at the beginning. Of this park, there were supposed to be softball fields, and they were not created. And I'm not going to point the finger at anybody. I don't know who made that decision, but I did talk to the people who started that. Said those were supposed to be softball fields. So I don't, I don't know why, but I say let's try and create four or eight fields that are going to go versatile for both boys and girls, and see what we can do. Because the boys are down too. Well, we've got the quote, so I mean, you know. But it's tabled. This is minutes of the park board meeting, and I think it's a great discussion. Thank you. Okay, and actually, there's no action. <laughs> no. A lot of discussion, which is good. Okay, are you done with your report? And the butterfly bench. Oh, there's a butterfly bench. Mr. Zumfeldi <laughs> has a butterfly bench with a couple sculptures for statues you would like to donate and <clears throat> that's been tabled at this point in time okay. we we're talking about putting the butterfly bench in with the natural grass area but we want to make sure that that is going to take before we put a bench in the middle of an area that may end up being a bench in the middle of a grassy field and nothing else around it no reason okay. to be yeah. Keith, do you remember off the top of your head how much you spent on the pickleball courts? Just a ballpark for me. Six, 60, 60, 60, 000, 60, 000, 60, 000 plus we had a donation for half the fence, so that was 
20, I think the fence was 30, about 100,000 altogether with 20,000 coming from Rotary. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. So we have no recommendations for our committee reports. Finance. Uh, finance, <coughs> Matt, Friday, March 15th. Um, three basic items came up. One was an upgrade to uh, the fire department uh, bay structure, the new, new shorelines, which basically I think are lines that allow us to recharge equipment on the vehicles. Uh, nothing's been done in this area for 30 years, and uh, there are, the vehicles have gotten more complex, need more charging availability. And the total amount of money at max for that would be 17,000. And uh, after discussion, the finance committee uh, moved, Councilor Chamberlain moved to pass that, seconded by Councilor Heising, a 3 0 vote to do that. Next matter was door locks. Um, Chief Kessler was asking for four locks, basically two for the fire department, one was for. Um, Jamie Jagir down by the finance department. There was no lock on that door. And the other one was for the police department across from what used to be the recreation department in the building here, uh, putting fobs in those so we can keep track of who's in uh, the building and who should be in, out of certain places. Uh, that cost was $12,987. Uh, I made the motion to approve it, seconded by Councilor Chamberlain. That passed three to zero. And the, the final matter was uh, Jamie requested two budget adjustments. Uh, one was repaying the OPWC loan through the water recreation plan account. The other was increasing the TIF amount by $5,000 for Ben Gleckler um, after discussion, explaining, and uh, Councilor Chamberlain recommended that. I seconded it, passed 3 to 0. So, it was, it was, we all seem to think that these were necessary items that weren't totally out of hand expense-wise and needed to be done. On the, the FOB issue, I just want to reassure all council members that uh, Chief Kessler promised that we would have access to the restrooms still. Okay, so we still could FOB in and get to the restrooms. Thank we're you, Chief Kessler. We're going to lock those up. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> That's for you, though. <laughs> Thank you, Chief. You can put a porta pot right yeah. outside. Right, right. right. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> that was it for the today. We had recommendations in for all of those. Okay. Any more discussion? So we have uh, quite a few to accept on the finance <coughs> committee, the recommendations. So we're going to start time. with the fire department being permitted to spend. 17,000 and enter into various agreements for the upcoming of its shorelines. I'll make that motion. I'll no, second it. Recommendation to update the shorelines. <laughs> Moved by Councilor Tiarina and seconded by Councilor Simon. Any discussion? Councilor Tiarina? Yes. Councilor Simon? Yes. Councilor Heise? Yes. Councilor Chairman? Yes. Councilor Schneider? Yes. Council President Stickman? Yes. Six days, motion carries. Okay. Thank you. I'd make a recommendation to the <coughs> purchase and installation of some new fob locks. A second. Recommendation that new locks be purchased and installed in four doors and inside the city building, moved by Councilor Chamberlain and seconded by Councilor Schneider. Any discussion? Councilor Chamberlain? Yes. Councilor Schneider? Yes. Councilor Tiarina? Yes. Councilor Simon? Yes. Councilor Heising? Yes. Council President Stickley? Yes. 6A, 0 nays, motion carries. And the final recommendation would be on the annual appropriation ordinance to provide the increase and decrease of certain line appropriations within the various funds in the 2024. Since I voted for it during the committee meeting, I'll make that motion. What? Since I voted for it during the committee meeting, I'll go ahead and make that motion today as well. I think it's a good idea yeah. still. Yeah. Second. Thank you. Recommendation that the 2023 annual appropriation ordinance be amended, moved by Councilor Chamberlain and seconded by Councilor Stigley. Any discussion? How much were the totals amount? 
it was what, right which, on there. Which was 5,000? Which was 5,000. And that was going to, where was that going to? That, that. Then the, remember I mean, that? yeah, I remember that. Right. But you said, okay, so. That, that was going to. Uh, ben Glecker. For Ben Glecker for that development out there. Okay. And then. Uh, where did, I mean, how are we off? On, and he's just increasing the cost of it or? Before, was, before we started to receive money in, we haven't really started right. receiving money in yet. He had another bill coming in. Oh, got it. Okay. Additional engineering, if I remember right, then. Okay, that makes sense then. And then the other thing was what? The, the, um, fixing the battery charging things in the fire department was seventeen thousand. And yeah, the lots was around twelve thousand, about thirty. Oh, 000. so just the it was only five thousand. Only five thousand. Oh, okay. I thought yeah, you just, had two. No, no, no. Just okay. Five thousand. Okay. And then there was two hundred thousand in there for a softball. We <laughs> 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 sneak that. Through. <laughs> <laughs> There's two items that only cost five thousand. Okay, uh, thank you. <laughs> just don't read them, okay? Just, yeah, no, just, no. Just, <laughs> I think it came out of the council budget. <laughs> Man, that's going to take 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, for the next 10 years, <laughs> we have to vote on the $300 third one, right? left in yeah. our budget. Right. Okay, we're voting on the third one. Councilor Chamberlain? Yes. Council President Stickley? Yes. Councilor Schneider? Yes. Councilor Tarina? Yes. Councilor Simon? Yes. Councilor Heisen? Yes. Six days, zero days, motion. Okay, thank you. Department heads. Billy, do you have anything? Yeah, the fire, fire department got another grant uh, through the state fire marshal's office for uh, just short of fourteen thousand. Uh, they're going to apply that towards a upgrading their fire extinguisher trainer. Um, it's been a while since we've had one uh, in working condition, so that'll be a nice addition to our PR. Other than that, uh, don't have any. What, what is fire extinguisher trainer? So we go out into the factories uh, or anywhere basically and uh, this one is a uh, holographic device that sits on the floor. It has flames and it has uh, a simulated fire extinguisher and it lets them uh, utilize a fire extinguisher like you would properly. It allows us to teach that. Oh, that's cool. <coughs> Putting it all over. Uh, yeah, putting the mess on. Did you use this at first try, uh, triangular processing when you guys happened? I don't know if we used that one at triangular. We used one like this uh, about a month or two ago at Watson Machine. They did okay. like 70 yeah. or 80 employees. We borrowed one from the state and uh, did it. So. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, we don't like fire extinguishers. Yeah, uh, me too. Well, putting in. out cars. Chief? <coughs> Uh, no real news from the police department as far as uh, since last time we all met. Uh, I guess no news is good news in this particular case. Um, just a reminder that tomorrow is our deadline for any civil service applications to, to take the test. Uh, we're still struggling on uh, getting people interested in law enforcement and applying for that job, but uh, we'll see where that takes us with the softball race. <laughs> I got I got one coming to you in four years. Okay, four, four years. years. Okay. Applicant for you. All right. <laughs> right. Hopefully, I still be. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, okay. All right. Get the bad news out of the way first. First quarter, 2024, our TTHM levels were above the recommended level of 0 0.8, 0 0.080. 0. We were at 0 0.082. We're down from 0 0.085. It's an average of all four quarters, so hopefully next quarter we will be out of EPA violations so we don't have to continue to send out the notices. I want to also let you know that I told you Thursday that we had the bid opening for the Oak Street project. I've been advised by ODOT that I can award this to our lowest bidder, uh, Henry Bergman, even though there was a tight paperwork error. They said that they have in the past let them correct those errors and allowed us to award it to him. There, Henry Bergman's company has went through and done all the paperwork to get that. So we will be awarding it once we get approval from ODOT. 
have the mayor sign off on it that uh, we can award it to them. Should be starting sometime this summer. I don't have a start date at this point in time. Um, should be hearing back from them shortly on that. Also this morning I was advised by ODOT that we have preliminary been approved for $300,000 for the Fulton Street repaving. It's a hard 300,000, anything over $300,000 is on us, but that's $300,000 that we don't have to take out of our coffers to repay them. We do have to jump through some hoops before we can do it, and this will be scheduled for their fiscal year 26, which starts July 1 of 25. So we've got a lot of work to do and not a lot of time to get it done, because all the curb ramps have to be ADA compliant before we can get this started or we have to make that part of the project. I would much rather have it done beforehand instead of going through all the ODAT procedures which would cost us a lot more money to do that. Not, the, not for the curb. <coughs> the last one we had was the downtown one that we utilized. So a few of those got repaired already so we're down a few of them that but fortunately it's just the curb ramps our our personnel should be able to do most of the sidewalks we will have to farm out the curb ramps so that they're ADA compliant and according to the state specs. I remember that that took forever to get them to come in and do those corners too. That was very well, difficult. Oak Street has the same thing in that project, so if I can get the company to do that, to come over and do these, we may be able to save even more money and get them all done this year. That'd be good. So I may be coming back to finance, I don't know. <laughs> so when you do the water and the re on Fulton, where are we coming from, Linfoot Street? Up all the way, be all the way down Linfoot Street to, the water line will be done from Willow, to Jefferson, it's plastic the rest of the way. Oh, it's plastic going north of Yes. And the street will be done from Linfoot to at least Jefferson. We could possibly go to Elm, but again, that would, there's only 300,000, so depending on how far we go, it depends on how much it's gonna cost us to do it. What size is that gonna be, 12 or nine? Six or eight. Oh, really? Yeah. Slow wind to one of us. Okay. Any questions? Uh, Keith, I know you have a lot of your plate. Have you given any thought to the <coughs> sidewalks you'll be repairing this year? Have you? The, uh, well, a portion of the new sidewalk money, I think, is going to go to these curb ramps to get that done. The tree damaged ones, our, our personnel will be taking care of the tree damaged ones that we have on the list right now, and we'll get as many of those done as we can with the 25,000 that's here, Mark. I drove down Elm Street towards the football field, and just look at those sidewalks, and those really could use some yeah. TLC, you know? Yes. Yeah. There's, there's quite a few that, some of them are ours, and some of them are gonna be the homeowners, but we'll try and get them working together and getting them in place. Because I have to believe during football season, those sidewalks are used quite heavily down Elm Street. Well, yeah. even with cool. kids walking to school, they go down Elm Street as well. And Elm. <coughs> that Elm, that, that one was really bad. Yeah. I just had one question. With the TTHM issue, in a simple way, what can we tell the public about that issue? Well, the two monitoring stations are outside the city of Wasia. They're up by the fairgrounds and over by the airport. Um, the levels inside the city have regularly been below the point zero eight zero. It's we have one area that is off on a dead end line that is since COVID. That's where we've been required to take the sample. It used to be the engineer's office, but had COVID, we couldn't get in there, so we had to sample on an outside hydrant. That's been our problem area. Once we can get the levels down, we're going to petition EPA to get that site moved to something that's more realistic on a main used line 
that is more realistic of what our actual levels are. No one lives on Dunbar Drive. No one utilizes that water, so it sets there and the levels build up in that area. I appreciate that. I remember seeing city employees in the basement of the courthouse taking samples, mm -hmm. and maybe maybe that was back then, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Anything else, Ricky? No? I don't really have much to report on. I would say that I was present at the last Rotary meeting when the club voted to approve donating the money for the 200000 plus for the um, new equipment at Homecoming Park. I think the 501c3 aspect of the, the club needs to approve that recommendation, I think, but, I, but I, at least the club appears to have agreed to do that. So, um, and there was a lot of discussion on, you know, how best to use the funds that Rotary has to assist the parks, and I think the conclusion was that that would be a real, you know, a real good place to do it. So, and I did go for a run this weekend in the trails. I'd like to recommend them to you if you haven't been out recently. I saw four or five deer there going through, and I. Were they muddy? Uh, no, they weren't too bad. A little wet in a couple of places, but definitely passable. I was kind of concerned about. I passed the lady and she said there's if there's five ears over there and I said ears okay. she said deers oh, <laughs> so, oh that's scary yeah, yeah I was, was gonna say bow his <laughs> and take some recommendations <laughs> but it was a it's really cool you know there's no real foliage out there so you can see kind of through there and there's a lot of nice water spots from the um, the wetland areas and the draining things that uh, Paul and Ed put in really seem to be working pretty well, keeping them dry. So it's definitely nice. passable. Yeah. That's nice. Have you been out there since the heavy rain time? Yeah. Okay. And yeah, they, I think I think it, it well. Yeah. Well, okay. so Saturday, and then I think the rain was a few days before then. Yeah. So I wasn't there right after the rain, but I mean, well. it always can use a little, you know, a little sprucing up here and there. But definitely. No concerns about not being able to walk or run through there. Yeah, I think Friday it rained. What it was a couple of inches. Was, was it Friday? Friday? Yeah. Thursday or Friday? Yeah, I think it was Thursday. 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 Yeah. So that's cool. Yeah. Really good. Appreciate it. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? All right. Let's move on then. The legislation. We need a motion to place resolution 2024-10 on the first reading. So move. Second. Motion to place resolution 2024-10 oh. on first reading moved by Councilor Chamberlain and seconded by Councilor Schneider. Thank I apologize. Second. I didn't put the county 911 final plan is what this is. Turn my page. To Any discussion? Councilor Chamberlain? Yes. Councilor Schneider? Yes. Councilor Tirino? Yes. Councilor Simon? Yes. Councilor Heisman? Yes. Yes. First responders take notes. <laughs> resolution 2024-11 is a resolution authorizing the Wasam Fire Department to enter into a memorandum of understanding for participation in the Fulton County Special Response Team. Second. Motion, motion to place resolution 2024 on 2024-11 <laughs> on the first reading, moved by Councillor Simon and seconded by Councillor Heising. Any discussion? Councillor Simon? Yes. Councillor Heising? Yes. Councillor Chamberlain? Yes. Councillor Thierry? Yes. Councillor Schneider? Yes. Council President Stickley? Yes. Six days, zero days, motion carries. Okay, resolution 2024-12 is a resolution to amend ordinance 2023-8 an annual appropriation ordinance by authorizing the director of finance to increase or decrease certain line account appropriations within the various funds listed within the year of 2024. I'll make that motion. Second. Motion to place resolution 2024-12 on first reading moved by Councilor Schneider and seconded by Council President Stickley. Any discussion? Councilor Schneider? Yes. 
Council President Stickley? Yes. Councilor Tiran? Yes. Councilor Simon? Yes. Councilor Heisen? Yes. Councilor Chamberlain? Yes. Six A, zero nays, motion carries. Okay, resolution 2024-13 is a resolution authorizing the mayor or her designee to enter into various agreements necessary for the installation of new shorelines in the fire department. And declaring this one an emergency. What's the emergency for? Uh, the electrical, the state of the electrical system itself, the shorelines, they're damaged, they, uh, they overheat, they get very warm. Okay. When are they coming? Uh, do you have them coming in? No, I have to have the money to order the stuff. Well, yeah, but I mean, do you have somebody that would be? No, this is something use? that uh, if Public Works can cut the steel, okay. we've got it arranged to uh, rent a man that we can take it down and install the new ones. All right. Do you need that yet? I don't know where we're at. Motion for, for an emergency to place it on an emergency. I will move. I was second the emergency. Motion to place resolution 2024-13 on emergency reading, moved by Councilor Heising and seconded by Councilor Chamberlain. Any discussion? Councilor Heising? Yes. Councilor Chamberlain? Yes. Councilor <coughs> Simon? Yes. Councilor Tirino? Yes. Councilor Schneider? Yes. Council President Stickley? Yes. Six days, zero days, motion carries. Trial. Second. <clears throat> motion to place Stand resolution 2024-13 on final reading. Moved by Councilor Schneider and seconded by Councilor Chamberlain. Any discussion? Councilor Schneider? Yes. Councilor Chamberlain? Yes. Councilor Heising? Yes. Councilor Simon? Yes. Councilor Tierna? Yes. Council President Stickley? Yes. Six days, zero days, motion carries. Okay. Thank you. Second reading. We have the resolution 2024-9 is a, a resolution accepting annexation petition for the nine parcels. I'll make that motion. I'll second. Motion to place resolution 2024-9 on second reading. I saw my mistake. Moved by Councilor Tiarina and seconded by Councilor Heising. Any discussion? Councilor Tiarina? Yes. Councilor Heising? Yes. Councilor Chamberlain? Yes. Councilor Simon? Yes. Councilor Schneider? Yes. Council President Stickley? Yes. Six A zero name motion carries. Okay, I have nothing under third reading. Under new business, I just need a motion to approve um, let's see, Kevin Height to the um, Planning Commission Board. His term is two thousand twenty four to twenty nine. Years. It's a long term. <laughs> it is. We have some people on there that's been on there over 20 years. Did you make a motion, Jim? Yes. I okay, I'll second the idea. Motion to approve the mayor's appointments to various boards and commissions, moved by Councilor Simon and seconded by Councilor Chamberlain. Any discussion? Councilor Simon? Yes. Councilor Chamberlain? Yes. Councilor Heising? Yes. Councilor Tierina? Yes. Councilor Schneider? Yes. Council President Stigley? Yes. 68 zero nays motion carries. Okay, uh, the only other new business I have, and I don't know if this will happen before our next meeting, is um, we discussed the lot system. Um, one thing that I've noted, and I don't know, Shane, if you even have yours, but all of the employees and council should have identification card with the city of Wauseon. Has not been changed since 2016. That needs to be updated. So I've talked with Kevin, and um, we're going to work with that. And those who are key holders in the city of Wauseon, um, we're going to also talk with Bill to see how many should be with the uh, key fobs. So uh, that's something I think is very important. I think every every employee of the city should be have an identification of some sort, um, just for their own safety and, and reasons. So um, that's something that we're going to get started. And if council gets a you know go to the police department and get your card update, take a picture, whatever. That's something I feel that needs to be done. And hopefully, your machine is working. <laughs> hopefully, it's been a while. <laughs> Some of us Do we, don't even have them. No, they haven't since 2016. I don't, right, right. So I don't have the last one. Time I, I, I have mine. Whenever I'm pulled over, I present it first. Well, that's because you're old. Uh, <laughs> you're old. <laughs> <laughs> the other five. Mayor, do we also have contractors that 
come into the building and out of the building regularly? During work they, days. They, During work days. Oh, I'm yeah. just thinking, Brandon, do they have this a question was already yes. answered, and yeah. they will be able to allow access automatically to wherever they need to go. Even during certain hours, or but I mean, they'll have a key fob, though. Okay, I'll be issued a key fob that's only good for that that project. Yeah, yeah, good. Okay, just so we know it where they're at. Oh, okay. right. Thank you, sir. And then who, whatever Sarah, department you. that's in, that person is responsible for making sure that they have somebody. Okay. At the courthouse, they sign them in and sign yeah. them out. Yeah. Yeah. Right. All right. Um, okay. Any other old business? If not, we just need to approve the bills, please. I'll make that motion. <laughs> Second. Motion to approve. 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 Mot